Welcome, in front of me is a Samsung Galaxy A12 and today I'll show you how to go through the setup process of the phone. So when you boot it up for the first time you'll be presented with the welcoming screen right over here. So let's tap on the arrow right over here and then select our desired language. Now I'm gonna go with English obviously. So actually let's go up. We go English. Let's tap on next. And then on the next page we have connect to mobile network. Now this is the page where you could insert your SIM card if you wanted to. But this step is completely optional and you don't have to. Uh, the moment you're ready to insert your SIM card you can do that at any moment and the phone will work uh, just fine the moment you do. So let's tap on next right now. I have check out some info to get started. So obviously we need to agree to the first one which is the end user license agreement. You can also tap on the details to read what you're exactly agreeing to. Uh, but yeah, at the end of the day, you do have to agree to it. Now, the rest of them are only optional, so you don't actually have to check them all on. You just need this first one, and from there, you can tap on Next. There we go. And here we have the Wi-Fi connection. So, and here you can simply choose your Wi-Fi if you have one near you uh, that you can connect to. If you don't, then uh, don't worry, you can simply skip it, at least right now. I believe if you are actually setting up the device for the very, very first time, for some odd reason it is required for you to uh, connect to it. Obviously this device has been reset, so I can skip it. Now, in my opinion it should have been the other way around, but yeah, if you're setting it up for the first time, you are literally required to connect to Wi-Fi. Uh, uh, or you can just insert a SIM card and use the mobile network. Now, for this one I'm gonna skip. And by skipping, I do miss out the option to have my date and time be set automatically and also the ability to log into Google account along with restoring my uh, device from a backup. But all of those things can be done later on throughout the settings, so you don't have to worry. So now we have copy apps and data, so it looks like I could still do it even though I'm not connected to Wi-Fi for some reason. So I'm just gonna select don't copy at the moment. I do want to set it up as a new device. And then we have the date and time, which is actually set correctly. Okay, so I don't have to do anything. But if you wanted to, you could just simply tap on those as an example time and choose the correct time by just tapping on the wheel right here. So let's tap on next. Now we have Google services. So we have things like location scanning and send user and diagnostic data. Now, each one of them does something a little bit different. So for instance, location is used by things like Google Maps to uh, to basically determine where you're located on the map and that is also used so you can use maps as a GPS navigation. Now it's also being used by some trash apps, uh, for instance the Xiaomi smart home appliances which for some reason a thermometer uh, that you connect via Bluetooth needs your location because why wouldn't it? Uh, every thermometer needs your location, right? So yeah, that's one of the downsides here. Uh, now. Another one below that we have allow scanning, so it just allows the device to scan for signals, things like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth devices around it. And then send the user and diagnostic data. Obviously gathers data on how you use the device and sends it to Google so they can quotation mark improve the usability of the device and in reality uh, selling data. So let's stop on accept. You could deselect all of them, I should mention. So if you don't want any of those, just simply turn them off. But anyway, on the next page we have protect your phone. So we have a couple ways of protecting our device. That'd be a face recognition, fingerprint, pin pattern, or password. So uh, if you want face recognition or fingerprint, you are still required to set one of the three below ones. So pin pattern or password. Same goes for the face, uh, face recognition. So both of those because they could be uh, something could change that that you are not allowed or able to unlock your device uh, you are still forced to set this one up one of the three below ones so you actually have always a way to unlock it because as an example uh, with the face recognition if you get beat up well your phone might not recognize your face uh, same with fingerprint you might just simply cut your thumb or something like that uh, on uh, while doing some stuff and you have no more access to your device so that's 
That's why you are still forced to uh, set up pin pattern or password on top of that. Now you can skip it all together or you could go with only pin pattern or password, uh, one, of, one of those, and not set up either fingerprint or face recognition. It's completely up to you. I'm just gonna skip it though. So skip anyway. And from here we have uh, get recommended apps. So if you don't want any of those, because let's be honest, the majority of them have a uh, Google alternative, which already comes installed on here. So things like uh, Samsung Notes, we already have just simple notes. Uh, Samsung Members, I don't even know what that is. So don't really interest me. Samsung Internet Browser, uh, we have Chrome, so obviously not needed. And Voice Recorder, I actually have no idea if there's a voice recorder, so I'm gonna keep it. So let's stop on next. And here we have uh, option to sign into a Samsung account. And this is where the Samsung starts to throw their trash at you. Uh, continuing this trend, so uh, you could sign in and get access to their uh, premium applications that are only accessible on Samsung, but let's be honest, all of them are basically a copy of something that Google already made. And let's just to put that to the test, well, this le list is really short. Uh, this is embarrassingly short. So on like the Galaxy uh, S lineup, uh, there is way more things that you get here, uh, but apparently they didn't even bother with this one. So just simply going over all of those, Galaxy Store has an alternative that comes pre-installed with the, uh, any kind of Android device, which is uh, Google Store or Play Store. Uh, so this is just complete garbage right here. Uh, find my mobile. Yeah, Google comes with find my device. It has come with it for decade now. Uh, then we have uh, Galaxy Themes. Uh, yeah, have you heard of the Play Store in its entirety? Uh, that's a great substitute for this. Um, and then we have Samsung Cloud. Google Drive doesn't exist apparently in Samsung's eyes. So yeah, uh, all of those are simply substituted with just Google. And let's be honest, uh, in my opinion, Google has way more versatility. Now, there is maybe an argument to the security. Uh, I do not know about the security of either of those. Um, obviously, Google gets hacked sometimes, but I assume Samsung will as well. So anyway, I'm just gonna skip this because I'm not interested in trash. And from there, it's all done. So let's click on finish and we should have access to our home screen. Any moment. There we go. So that is how you would set up your device. And if you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and thanks for watching.